This is the world you know, where people live among each other, side by side with animals. But we are not the only incredible organisms living on this planet. We'll now have a look at some of the amazing organisms that we previously never would have imagined to find on our planet. Well, humans are living in normal conditions. But what about the more extreme environments? Will we also be able to find life there? Well, let's have a look. In these environments we will also find life. Small organisms live under these extreme conditions. These organisms are called extremophiles. So the interesting thing is how these extremophiles can survive in those harsh conditions. The key word is adaptation. When we are talking about adaptation, we are referring to the ability to adapt to the environment. The humans adapt to different conditions by using different mechanisms. In the same way does extremophiles. Well, extremophiles can adapt to different environmental factors. It can be physical, geochemical, or biological factors. We'll now have a closer look to the temperature, how extremophiles adapt to very high temperatures. These extremophiles are called thermophiles. Let us consider what happens to pasta when we put it into boiling water. Well, we'll see that the structure of the pasta changes and it becomes more flexible. A very important part of the cell is the cell membrane. If we look at a cell, we'll see that it has a membrane that protects the cell from the environment. And if we take a closer look to the membrane, we'll see that the membrane typically consists of a lipid bilayer and we draw it like this. The lipid bilayer consists of phospholipids which are those um, the main building blocks that we draw like this. But when a cell is in a very uh, hot environment and the temperature is increased the membrane would typically be more flexible and when the membrane is more flexible this will sometimes means that, or it will sometimes lead to what we call cell lysis. And in cell lysis, the membrane is broken. And when the membrane is broken, the cell will not be able to protect itself from the environment any longer. And this will, in the end, mean that the cell will die. This is not a good thing. So, in order to avoid the cell lysis, the thermophiles that live in very hot environments, they have adapted in different ways. And we will try to look at some of the mechanisms now. If we take a closer look to the main building block, the phospholipid, then we'll see that the phospholipid consists of two fatty acid chains. The fatty acid chains are drawn like this. In order to adapt to the um, hot environment, the thermophiles uh, have some different characteristics. First of all, the fatty acids are longer. And secondly, the fatty acids are more branched, which means that they will have side chains. So we will dry draw the side chains like this. And finally, the fatty acids will also be more saturated, which means that they'll have less but double bonds. And 
and this double bounce um, also stabilizes the membrane and the thermophiles. And this will together give a more rigid membrane. And the more rigid membrane will give a very stable membrane in the hot environment. And this will make the thermophile able to survive in the very hot environments. If we now take a look at an egg and observe what happens to the egg when we boil it, we'll see that the structure of the proteins change due to the high temperature. One of the other things that can happen due to the very high temperature is that the proteins in the cell due to the high temperature can denature. A denatured protein is a protein that has lost its original structure and therefore it will not function anymore. This is not good for the cell. Another thing that can happen with the protein due to the very high temperature is that they can form aggregates. An aggregate is a complex of several proteins. When a protein is in an aggregate, it will not function anymore and it will therefore be worthless for the cell. Therefore, in order to avoid that the, cell, that the proteins denature and form aggregates, the thermophiles can produce heat shock proteins. The heat shock proteins are formed under heat shock, which means under very high temperatures. When the heat shock proteins are formed, they can do at least two things. First of all, they can go up here and they can avoid the proteins to form aggregates or they can help, help pretending the proteins to form aggregates. Another thing the heat shock proteins can do is that they can move over here and if a protein in the cell due to the high temperature is denatured this heat shock protein will be able to refold the protein back to its original form, original structure. And when the protein is refold, it might be able to function again in the cell, which is important. Well, let's try to summarize what we have learned today. We have seen that in very harsh conditions, we'll also find life, the organisms that we call extremophiles. These extremophiles can survive there due to adaptation. And we looked at one kind of extremophiles, the thermophiles, and we saw that the thermophiles have at least two different mechanisms. One is the cell membrane that they change. And the second is the fact that they produce heat shock proteins in order to protect their proteins. But these mechanisms are not the only one. And this kind of extremophiles are not the only one. There's a lot of extremophiles out there and there's a lot of mechanisms. And we still need to learn more about the extremophiles and thereby learn more about life 